So, uh, getting plucky. Rip jams. I'm Ben Dell. Uh, I'm a full-time developer. A little bit about me. What? Air? I, ha I have plenty of that. Thank you. Um, I'm a full-time developer at Irisworks. I work up on the north side. Uh, and I'm giving the Ruby Jams this week on, uh, on getting plucky. Let's do this. Uh, so let's talk, let's talk searching. Uh, databases is kind of a huge part of using Ruby, and a lot of times developers will find themselves having to query through things. Uh, for most of us, we've probably found ourselves in a classic situation where you have to take something and you're going to choose, you're going to select a particular item, and out of that particular item you're looking for um, in maybe a first name, right? So you may do dot .select, dot .map. Uh, this is the tried and true method for a very long time. I think every developer has found themselves in that, and maybe even you used a dot all, and that worked for a long time. Uh, it was really great. This is this is in the history of Ruby, if you will. Uh, and then I'm sure the developers had a, uh, you know, I'm sure they enjoyed doing this, but I'm sure they thought to themselves something like, "There's got to be a better way. How can people help us out with this?" Um, and I like to think to myself that the people who were upkeeping Ruby thought to themselves. You know, you're right, we should probably assist you. We are very intelligent developers who love Ruby. Um, and the developers who were asking for that, of course, were very kind, considerate, and understanding. Um, and so after a certain amount of time, they decided, you know what, we think we have a solution. They came forward with it. And uh, that left developers very happy. Uh, which brings us to, to Pluck. Uh, Pluck allows you to query a single column from a single table. It effectively mashes together what you have to do with the select and map option. But with that, there are a lot of caveats. You can't just go, um, or sorry, with that, there are caveats that are avoided. For example, uh, it's fast. There is improved speed when you are plucking. Um, up on the screen you can see a test. I don't know how well you can actually read that from the back. I apologize to those of you who are further back, but um, they're doing a benchmark measure of what the speed is of these relative searches. Now for select, they found that it was 91% slower than doing pluck, and that comes down to Ruby having to instantiate each of those objects. Um, that can take a lot of time, and so pluck can be very, very useful. Again, as an early developer, I found myself in the office quite a bit. Anytime I was looking for something, I would either do a dot all and then map, or a dot select and choose. Um, sometimes I would even do kind of like a find by or something like that. Uh, a lot of times I could really just, I should have been plucking. Um, but there are things to know if you're going to go into the office and just start plucking around. Uh, we want to make sure that we practice safe plucking. Uh, you don't want to avoid, or you want to avoid any unnecessary duplication. And plucking around can cause that if you're not careful. You want to make sure that you include a distinction there. So in this case, I have, I have my, my three names that I'm hoping to yield from that. Uh, if I were not being distinct with that, I might end up with more. Uh, and that can always be, well, a little bit of a letdown, having a little bit more yield than what you expect there. You also want to make sure that you are appropriately placing your plucking habits. We don't want to find ourselves plucking too early because you will be blocked with a no method error. Uh, since pluck returns an array, you want to make sure that that is what you are hoping to yield in your manipulation series. And the beauty of pluck is it's not something that you have to call and yield for just one. Uh, you can actually pluck multiple things. You can go willy-nilly with your plucking if you wish. Uh, so in this case, as we uh, pluck these individuals, we are getting both their first and their last name from the plucking process. You can also, because under the hood, pluck itself uh, is running a little bit of SQL. If you find yourself thinking, man, I've been using the same old pluck, this is just getting a little bit boring, you can uh, spice up your plucking habits, if you will, and inject a little bit of SQL into the mix. Uh, here what we're doing is we're simply just concatenating them, so rather than returning an array of arrays, first and last name, here we're actually getting the full thing that we need. 
And I know for many people, and in a lot of situations, you have something built where you've got a method. You know, I've got my methods. I know how this is done. I've already got something I can call and create that first and last name. Uh, this is really just kind of an option that is available for you. Uh, should you find yourself in that situation, or this also opens up the avenue to you adding as much SQL as you like in your plucking sequence. Um, you, those of you who have been developing for a while, you may also know some other tricks that you can add to your uh, plucking habits, uh, but some of you may be old pros at plucking, but this is a good starting point for those of you who are going to uh, enter the world of pluck. Get to plucking. <laughs>